Hello and welcome to the second day of Moving On. We are live in the aquarium. Uh, today I am lucky enough to be joined by Robert Orr, managing partner at Cuna Del Mar, and also uh, one of the founding members of the Canadian Ocean Supercluster, which we're going to get into. How's it going, Robert? It's going great. Thanks Happy a lot to for joining us. here this morning, yeah. Um, so I, I want to start, before we get into Cuna Del Mar specifically, I want to start with the, the supercluster that you were talking about. What is, w give me a, a, a basic briefing on the Canadian Ocean Supercluster. So the supercluster uh, is one of five superclusters that have been uh, uh, nominated by the federal government as areas for economic development. The, there's one in Montreal on AI and there's, there's uh, others, uh, three others across the country. But the premise is that, that uh, uh, in Atlantic Canada, uh, of which Nova Scotia is part, we, we've had this massive capacity for research around the oceans. In Halifax, as an example, there are over 500 uh, marine-related PhDs. And so we've had this intellectual capacity, but we really haven't done a great job of commercializing that, that uh, intellectual capacity. And so the thought process is that a uh, private sector-led uh, initiative to work on collaborative R&D projects that, that would put Atlantic Canada uh, at the forefront of ocean technology, uh, which we think over the next 25 years or so is going to be a key area of growth around the world. I see. Okay. And technology is... Um, I, I, I'm sure that takes many forms, but the key challenges that this technology might address, um, maybe, maybe paint a picture of that for me. What, what, are, what are we facing in terms of uh, ocean challenges? Well, we're, I mean, anyone who's concerned about the global environment has to be concerned about the environmental sustainability of our oceans. Right. It's still 70% of the planet. And more than that, when you look at it in a three-dimensional rather than a two-dimensional way. Hmm. Uh, you, oh, three-dimensional, I see. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the challenges, particularly around ocean conservancy, has been it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. So if it's not on the surface, you don't, you don't see it, you don't see the impacts of, that may be going on. So I think that there's a lot to do around oceans. I mean, uh, ocean transportation is still the most efficient, uh, uh, on a per-ton basis, uh, transportation mode, okay. uh, you know, by a factor of probably 10. I see. Um, so, but there's still a lot of opportunities, whether that's uh, in, uh, you know, ships that are, that are using new technology, whether it's solar te power technology or other forms of technology that are, that are emerging. So transportation w is going to change over the next 50 years in the oceans. Um, how we use the oceans, how we feed ourselves out of the oceans, which is a particular interest of Cunard del Mar, obviously. Right. Um, uh, but what we have seen, for instance, in the supercluster is as uh, offshore oil and gas, for instance, or um, uh, looking at turbine uh, energy and, uh, from tidal energy and so forth, wow. there's, a, there's a need to instrument, there's a need to understand what's going on in the ocean, there's a need to, to be able to communicate that back to, uh, to, f to folks on land, and to do that remotely and in harsh environments, uh, and so there's a lot of commonality. One of the things about superclusters is we're looking for new models of collaboration between private sector companies in different sectors. Right, okay. Uh, and, and part of the whole supercluster initiative is to, uh, at a minimum, have two different private sector companies investing in a, in a new R&D technology that would then get some matching funding from the federal government. I see. As public opinion grows or, or this uh, visibility of, um, you know, the, some of the problems that we're facing um, in the ocean kind of grows. Is that helping in terms of investment and technology? Are, are people investing more in looking to the ocean and how to solve those things? <coughs> yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of money looking at, uh, at the oceans uh, now um, and trying to identify, you know, things like, you know, can we develop energy from the ocean? So right. can we, you know, whether that's hydrogen or whether that's saltwater uh, battery technology, um, other, other forms of technology that may emerge. Uh, so there, uh, and again, on the food side, on the sustainability side, there's a lot of ocean technology uh, going on. It's, 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 we don't know a lot about that environment. Right. Uh, and even things like the Arctic starting to open up and how do we make sure that if we're going to operate in that part of the world, we can do so in a sustainable way so we're not doing any environmental harm. Right. 
And, and I think that's the key thing from a Cunha del Mar point of view that we're interested in is, is we're, we're thinking about, starting to think, think about things in the whole systems way. And I think that we in Nova Scotia as a, as a relatively small province with a population of a million, million people, but we've got a, a huge uh, infrastructure uh, community college infrastructure and university infrastructure that people are unaware of. So we've got a, an educated workforce, um, a capacity to communicate, and what we're looking to do is leverage that and start to build a real global center of excellence for, for ocean technologies. Okay, wow. You mentioned uh, this whole systems thinking. Um, is this... You know, is this part of the, the, the mandate of the supercluster to make sure that this is taken into account among so many other pieces here? Yeah, I, I don't know that, the, that uh, the federal government was thinking in terms of whole systems thinking. I think they were looking to introduce these new models of collaboration because I think in the 21st century collaboration, new models of collaboration are, are essential for success. But I think what we also see from a, you know, I'm starting to see from a business point of view is that that, that corporations don't live in isolation. We're part of a whole system. We're part, part of the communities in which we work. We're part of the environment in which we work. And so starting to think about solutions and starting not you looking at sustainability from a, a bolted on point of view, right. but starting as you know, how does the whole system function effectively from the get go and building the business models. Yes, you need to be profitable. Uh, uh, and, but if you're thinking about environmental sustainability and profitability and, and social responsibility as a way of being as you enter into your, your, your corporate activities at the essence of who the corporation is, then you start to make different decisions. Uh -huh. And I think we're, we're looking at you know, that kind of thinking that we think will serve as well as we go into the 21st century from a, an Atlantic Canadian and from a, a Nova Scotia base. I have no doubt that, uh, you know, I, I mean, I can feel the optimism in, in, in the way you speak about it, and I've, I've seen some of the stuff you've spoken about before, um, but what are, the, what, are the, what are the reasons to be optimistic here? What do you see in the, in the not-too-distant future that makes you very hopeful about? Well, the, the thing that always keeps me optimistic is that, that I think at our nature, human beings are, are creative. And, and we live in a faster and faster moving world. Information is changing so fast, and, 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 but what we have as a capacity is the ability to create our own future. Mm -hmm. Historically, what we've done is we've had enough time, when time was moving a little bit, uh, or, or innovation was moving at a slower rate, to kind of take things out of the past and assimilate them into the future. I think what we've got to do now is kind of stand grounded in the information that we can garner out of the past, but not be guided by it. We've really got to be... Real leadership is about identifying, you know, what's the future that we want to create and then assembling the resources, partnerships, collaborations that are going to align, align around creating that kind of future. Right. And I think that's what we're trying to do uh, um, in Nova Scotia. I mean, why we're here is most people don't know that, that uh, there are 3,200 Michelin employees in Nova Scotia. Uh, one of their core processing plants uh, is there and, and we have a uh, the, the province of Nova Scotia is here uh, supporting this event as a sponsor and we're making connections and understanding how innovation works as, as we're looking to become an innovation economy. Right, right. I did not know that, so that's, uh, that's an amazing piece. Um, are there any specific um, or any investments <coughs> maybe on the Cuno del Mar side um, that you're particularly excited about that uh, are worth shedding light on? Yeah, well, recently we, we made an investment in a, in a Nova Scotia-based company uh, called Vemco, which, uh, which is the company that most people have heard of the global fish tracking network. Uh-huh, right. Which uses acoustic telemetry to, to tag fish or other larger mammals and put receivers out there and you can track their behaviors and patterns. Um, but what we saw in that basic technology was that that technology could be used in a, in a number of other ways. Uh, so we're investing in, in offshore uh, sustainable aquaculture. I mean, our basic premise is that in the 21st century, we should be able to feed ourselves, and we're worried about 9 billion people in the planet, on the planet in another you know, 30 years or so. So how do we feed ourselves and honor the planet simultaneously? These should not be mutually exclusive concepts. Right. right. Uh, and so what we saw is this acoustic telemetry, this ability to communicate um, subsurface uh, and, and above 
uh, this monitoring system. So one of the things we're excited about is building monitoring systems that can identify the quality of what's going on in the ocean, eventually looking at developing using AI to be able to understand the health of, of fish in their natural habitat, even though they're enclosed. Wow. And so there's a lot of things around how we can use technology to put fish in their natural environment, but, but farm them. I mean, part of our kind of um, people in the, in the traditional fishery don't like it, but I, I don't see any need 50 years from now that we need to be out you know, harvesting wild fish. Wow. We don't get any of our other protein sources uh, through wild capture anymore. Right. We just haven't developed efficient systems to do it, healthy systems to do it. I see. And with time, our oceans can recover their ecosystems and, and um, you know, that part of the planet can continue to serve us and make sure we're living in an environment for my grandchildren and their grandchildren. So it's going to be a, uh, a, an efficient, effective, healthy place for people to live and consuming right. healthy food that, that's, that's grown in harmony with the ocean. That is the future I want to be a part of. Um, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Robert Orr, managing partner, Kuna Del Mar, and also founding member of the Canadian Ocean Supercluster. Thank you so much. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.